Hi, I'm Belle from Seems So Me, and I'm really excited to be able to bring you this quilt block lanyard tutorial. This tutorial goes along with a guest blog post that I have written for Elizabeth of Quilters Candy, and I'll make sure to link that in the show notes so you can read the blog post as well as find the measurements and the step-by-step -step directions to make your own quilt block lanyard. You might be wondering, what is a quilt block lanyard possibly for? Well, we have Quilt Con coming up soon. We have Quilt Weeks throughout the country the rest of this year that are sponsored by the American Quilter Society. And also there's Quilt Festival and Quilt Market in the fall. My guild has over 250 members and we're required to wear a lanyard. If you don't, you have to drop in some change into a jar, which actually goes towards our guild, which is a nonprofit. So you may go to some of those events, you may have retreats that you go to, and what a great way to be able to display your name, your business, as well as a handy place to store your business cards. So let's get started so you can make your own quilt block lanyard with any type of quilt block that makes your heart sing. So let's get started on making our quilt block lanyard. So again, here is the lanyard that I've made. This will be what I use for quilt con. And I used my baby lock Sasha Co to use uh, to make some pretty stitches. You could hand stitch if you want. And then this has a pocket. Now my pocket I actually added on a little differently than how I'm gonna show you in the tutorial. And I'll explain why and you could alter this if you want. So when I did not add the pocket on first, I was able to quilt and then quilt the back to it as well. You can see those stitches here. I was able to quilt all three layers together. And then I added my pocket on last and stitched it to the top. I didn't love kind of how messy that looked on this. So the tutorial that I've made, the pocket is actually made to be caught within the seam when we turn it inside out. So it will look slightly different than this, but just keep in mind that you'll actually only be quilting your first two layers to the batting and to the quilt top, but not to your backing the other way. So I'll end up using a little bit of fabric tack to kind of keep those three layers together. So I did want to show you that at first to let you know if you don't want to sew the pocket on for some reason, you don't want a pocket for your business cards like I have, then you actually can um, quilt um, the first two layers and then actually do more quilting even when you put the backing on. But that would not work with the way we have the pocket attached because you would be quilting through both of these and not be able to use this as a pocket. So I did want to give that disclaimer first before we get started. So on this quilt lanyard, I've used a measuring tape, but you could use ribbon, you could use string, you could use leftover binding that you had. So whichever you prefer. I get these often from the dollar store. I think this last one I got from a flea market as well. So 50 cents or a dollar to get those. And one that you can cut up. That's what you'll need. This will be 36 inches long to be able to make this lanyard this length where it lays at a good length around your neck. So this is mine, and I wanted to be able to kind of show that to you up close so you could see that, and also, also that it was slightly different than what I'm going to show you on how to make it because I feel like this other way it looks a bit cleaner. So before we get started, a couple of other things. Uh, I've made basically a, a block in which I have a square in the middle and then I have strips around it, but here's some other options for you. These are all made out of scraps that I had left over from other projects. You could do Sawtooth Star, uh, you could do Churn Dash, just whichever makes your heart sing. But I did want to show you some other examples. And these are different sizes. So you could choose to make a different size rather than the one that we're making today. I often have this little basket next to my sewing machine. And when I am making binding and I'm um, cutting those binding strips, um, this is what's left over. And I go ahead and sew those together to make half square triangles. And so I keep these handy and sometimes I don't sew them together. And and so these are great scraps that you could use to be able to make it or other scraps that you may have as well. So 
just wanted to show you those options before we get started. So here's the things that you're going to need. First off, what I have here is I'm going to make one just like mine, so you'll know how to do that. But I wanted to let you know, use whatever type of block you want. So I have here my center square, and these are all leftover art gallery fabrics. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go to machine, your machine, and sew together your block, however you want that to be. So I think I'm probably going to lay these out uh, probably something like this. I'll sew all this together and trim it down to five and a half by five and a half. That's going to be the size of this block. And so go ahead and go to your sewing machine and sew your block together and then we'll come back and I'll let you see what mine looks like as well. You also are going to need your pocket and your pocket size is three and a half by five and a half and then you're going to need your piece for the back of your quilt block lanyard and this is five and a half by five and a half and this is the piece that's actually going to lay right here on the back for your pocket and this will be folding down and I'll show you how to do that in a bit and then also your piece of batting which is one inch larger than your block so this is six and a half by six and a half inches so go ahead and go to your machine sew your block together and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the process for being able to assemble it so now that you've sewn your block together there's a few things that we'll want to talk about one thing is I've used light colored fabric and this is where my name actually is on my quilt lanyard. I feel like it shows up better, but you can put your name wherever you want to on your block. Uh, you'll just want to think about how that's going to show up really well. So the next step is you're going to take your backing, which again is cut six and a half by six and a half. This has been trimmed to five and a half by five and a half. And you're going to want to use a little bit of basting spray. You don't have to, but I find that it keeps the block on there better when you're actually quilting it. And you'll just stick your quilt block on top there and press that down to keep it in place. Looks like there's some threads in the way, so I'll move those out of the way so that doesn't show through to that light colored fabric. Now, your next step is going to be to go ahead and quilt, I'm sorry, embroider your name or write your name or hand stitch your name on your quilt block before you quilt it. So you might wanna use a colored DMC pearl cotton thread, which is nice and thick, and you can see how you would be able to see that really well on there. Or you could use a fabric marking pen. This is a permanent one, and you could write that on there if you'd like. Or, like me, I used my sewing machine that has embroidery letters, and I just, it's computerized, and I was able to spell out what I wanted, and it spelled Bell of Seam So Me. I also used a 40 weight Coates and Clark I'm sorry, it's a 30 weight Coates and Clark cotton quilting thread and it's variegated. So it changed colors, which I really liked. It went well with mine. So completely up to you, but you'll want to think about that and go ahead and put your name on here in whichever manner you'd like to do. Once you've put your name on there, then you're ready to quilt your block. And uh, the reason you do your name first is because you may not want to be sewing over where you quilted your name. So go ahead and take this to your sewing machine, or you may choose to hand quilt this if you'd like. Quilt whatever design you want, and then we'll come back and talk about the next steps for the lanyard. Okay, so now that you have quilted your block to your batting here, then you'll go ahead and trim it up. And I just use my my ruler here and just just kind of eyeball it you see how it sometimes kind of shifts a little bit uh, whenever you've quilted so I just trim on up kind of eyeball it there and go and do that around all the edges and this doesn't have to be 100% perfect I just kind of square everything up there Because this is going to get caught up in the seam whenever you sew your backing and your pocket on. 
Okay, so now that this is squared up, trimmed up, I guess I should say, this is what you're left with. And so what you're going to do now is you're going to take your piece here that is that you've cut for the pocket and you're going to fold it over and I've already folded it over and pressed it. I actually use something that's really handy. It's this clover pressing ruler. It's made out of fabric. You can see the little fibers there and you can actually iron on it. It doesn't melt or anything. And so I use this when I am trying to get a good quarter inch folded down then you just use this and fold it over and then press on top of the ruler on your pressing mat and it folds that down. So if you don't have one of these, that's totally fine. You can eyeball it, but go ahead and fold that down and press it a fourth of an inch and then go to your sewing machine and you're gonna sew about an eighth of an inch down to finish off this edge because this is what's gonna be the pocket on the back of your lanyard. So go to your machine and do that now. So now that you've sewn your eighth of an inch down on your pocket, I went ahead and kept using the same variegated thread color. You're going to take your, basically your quilt top block that you've quilted, and you'll have that face up. And then you're going to take your pocket and you're going to turn it face down or right sides together and line that up there. You'll then take your five and a half by five and a half inch square that you've cut for the back of your quilt lanyard and you're going to lay that down face down so right side to right side as far as these two facing together. You're going to line that up and then you'll take some clover clips and I tend to use three, one on this side, one for the bottom, and one for this side. And it keeps everything together so nothing shifts because that way you can make sure it all gets caught up in the seam. You're gonna wanna take your ruler and measure in approximately one inch and you'll mark one inch on this side and then same on this side mark one inch where you can see that the reason for that is because when you use the tape measure this will be what holds your lanyard around your neck this is where these will go on the inside of those marks there, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your sewing machine and you're gonna back stitch at this first line so it's good and secure, because this will be turned right side out. And stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around your lanyard, your block, to this second line and back stitch here as well. That way when we turn this right side out, this won't give as far as your thread's coming undone. So go ahead and take this to your machine. We'll stitch a quarter inch all the way around and then we'll talk about what to do next. Now that you've sewn a quarter inch all the way around your block, you're gonna wanna go ahead, double check and make sure that everything was caught when you stitched it. And go ahead and trim off the corners. It just makes it a little nicer whenever you use your point turner to poke out these corners. Okay, so you've got your opening here and now you're gonna turn it right side out. And since you've back stitched on both sides of the lines there, it should be pretty secure where you're not gonna have any problems with it coming in thread. Now this is where you can get a little freaked out thinking that you've sewn it incorrectly because when you turn this right side out, it looks like your pocket is not sewn on correctly, but I'll show you that it is. It's not a problem. Go ahead and poke all of those corners out and you'll see it looks like your pocket is not correct, but you actually go ahead and just flip this over to the back side, like that. And then you'll go ahead and 
finish poking those corners out. Make it all nice and smooth. And you'll also do this, of course, for the top. You've, you've got that one inch on each side that you've left open. And poke that out there. And you'll see what happened here. My stitch actually came undone because I did not back stitch on my block. So I'll have to go to my machine and fix that there. But ultimately, this is what this is gonna look like. There's your pocket. There's your front. So you'll take this to your pressing mat and you'll press it down, use some starch and press this really well and fold over your inside seams there a quarter of an inch and press that really well, okay? Because then what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert our measuring tape on the sides and then we're gonna stitch an eighth of an inch across to close that up. Okay, so go ahead and take this to your pressing mat. I'll do the same as well, and we'll come back and talk about next steps. So now we've pressed our quilt block with a lot of starch. That's what I tend to do. Um, it makes it lay really flat and it's really firm. And we folded this down and we've ironed these down as well as far as our seam. Now I wanna to talk to you about really a few options that you have as far as what to do from here before we put in our measuring tape that's gonna be what holds our lanyard around our neck. So you can see here that the, these layers are not quilted, right? The back is not quilted to this front here. So here's where you have some options. You could do one of three things, and I'm going to pick option three. The first one is you can put these clover clips here and just kind of mark the edges. And you could technically go ahead and stitch in the ditch if you wanted right along here, but don't come past these clips because if you do, you're gonna sew your pocket shut. So you could do that just to kind of keep those layers here together a bit more if you wanted. You also could choose to use some fabric tack and go ahead and go in through that little opening there and put that in here and press those together to keep that down that way if you want all of this middle to really uh, be stuck together. Now, <clears throat> the other option, which is option number three, which is what I'm really showing for the tutorial today, is once we insert our um, measuring tape in here, we're going to be sewing an eighth of an inch all the way around and top stitch the whole way around this entire quilt block. Now this works with this square because as of the finished lanyard, it's five by five inches. And when you look at a business card, the business card fits even with that stitch, that one eighth inch stitch all the way around. And what'll happen is it will look like a faux binding. So that there will be a stitch that shows, so keep that in mind. I actually use this it's not quite invisible, but it's really good. It is Superior Thread Micro Quilter. It's a hundred weight, and it's kind of a silver color. And this thread is very, 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 I'm sorry, very lightweight and not very visible. And so that's what I'm gonna do with this. So there, you'll see the stitch line all the way around, but it still leaves plenty of room for your cards. So those are really your options on how you, if you want these layers, to be stuck together since you're not able to quilt all of this together because it would close your pocket in. So for the tutorial, what you're gonna do now is, remember you've marked one inch in on both sides. You're going to, and I'll zoom out, you're gonna take your measuring tape. And it's really important to look at the orientation of your measuring tape because if you get this turned the wrong way, it's not gonna lay right on your neck. So you're gonna wanna make sure that they're facing the right direction where this lays correctly around your neck. If it's twisted, it'll bother you. Ask me how I know. The very first one I made, I made that mistake. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take the ends and I go ahead and put it down about half an inch on both sides and I use a clover clip to hold it there. And the same thing for the other side, about half an inch down. 
just that enough to where you make sure you catch it whenever you sew your seam shut there. So you're gonna take this to your sewing machine, make sure that's folded down really good, and you're gonna sew one eighth of an inch all the way around your entire quilt block. And it'll kind of look like there's a little bit of a faux binding on here if you do it that way, and I think it's a nice way to finish it off. And again, if you did want to stitch in the ditch slightly just to keep this closed a little more, you could, or you could use the fabric tack. Just be mindful not to sew through this pocket. Okay, so we'll go to our machines, sew this together, and then come back and look at the final product. So here we go. We have our quilt block lanyard. Here's the front and here's the back. So I did, I went ahead and decided to go ahead, you can see here, and I quilted just the top part there. I used those two clover clips to make sure I didn't quilt on down where the pocket was. And that just secured that a little bit more on the back. So I just actually stitched in the ditch with that microfiber thin thread, you can see that there. And then of course the 1 8th of an inch all the way around there. And that's what that looks like. So your cards fit in, your business cards can fit in with plenty of room there. And then also another fun thing too is a lot of us might have little um, pins from visiting places. This is the National Quilt Museum in Paducah that I got to visit. And this is one, uh, the Missouri Quilt Museum in Hamilton. And these will stick on there. Um, on mine that I have right now, the one I'll be taking to QuiltCon, I've got my... Um, Modern Quilt Guild uh, membership emblem, and then also my um, American Quilter Society, and those just fit right through on there. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of making your own quilt block lanyard, and you can wear it hopefully to one of the upcoming quilt conventions or one of your quilt activities. And since I already have a quilt lanyard, and this one is already made, if you are going to be at QuiltCon, in February in Phoenix, I will be bringing this one with me. And the first person that finds me at QuiltCon and runs into me and would like this, um, then I'll give it to you. You might just wanna bring your, your DMC thread and you actually could embroider your name on here. Um, and uh, you know, just bring your needle and just go ahead and put your name and I'll bring this and just give it to you for free and let me know that you actually watched the tutorial and um, I'd be, be happy to give it to you. So I'm Belle from Seam Sew Me and I can't wait to see all of your quilt block lanyards. Please use the hashtag quilt block lanyard and also feel free to tag me on Instagram and you can find me at Seam Sew Me and my website is listed on the card as well. So friends, keep making lovely things, and I'll look forward to next time in the next tutorial.